Blockchain and cryptocurrency have had several different waves of innovation. We've seen the wave of innovation and of uh, decentralized finance. We've seen the innovation of non-fungible tokens. And now we're seeing the innovation in a new form of business organization called a DAO, a D-A-O. But the question is, what's a DAO? a DAO and to understand why it is so innovative and valuable, especially in the blockchain world, we need to understand what it's trying to break and what it's trying to do better. So I've driven, I, I, I drew up a little org chart from a traditional organization where we have a CEO up top, Mr. Happy CEO, right? And we have all of his VPs and all of his, all of his various different minions. And as anybody who's ever worked at a fast food joint or anybody who's ever folded clothes at a various different, you know, gap or whatever, you realize that the real work is done by these guys down here. All of their hard work of selling this stuff, but then the profits all trickle up. And importantly, the only person who's happy in this whole situation is that happy CEO. And that's problem. Because what we are seeing here is we're seeing a very inefficient allocation of resources. What, who on earth is this guy? And how is his work actually contributing to the success of the entire organization? So what was created in blockchains and what has been created in DAOs is a decentralized autonomous organization that runs on-chain through smart contracts. There are three main principles inside a DAO. We need to make sure we have a shared interest. We need to make sure that we have some shared assets. And we need to make sure we have shared responsibility. And if we can have those three things, then those are the building blocks of a DAO. There are many different flavors of DAOs. There are a bunch of different things you can do with a DAO. But almost all of them have these three things in common. But how does that work? How does it actually make a difference? So imagine this is you and a group of your friends, and you're all passionate about coding. You're all very passionate about blockchain and cryptocurrency. So you all get together and you form a DAO. And to kickstart the DAO, everybody puts in 10 bucks, right? So let's say that our treasury ends up being, you know, $10,000, just roughly. Now these $10,000, those are all assets we have in common. And the other important asset that they all have in common is that nobody is keeping secrets from anybody else. Traditionally, the CEO has all the secrets, right? And his VPs, they all know all sorts of stuff that nobody down here knows or nobody outside of the organization knows. But internally to a DAO, everybody knows everything else about what they're doing. And they all agree that what they're going to do is they're going to build this product called Happy Box. And in building Happy Box, they're going to sell it and all the revenue and all the, 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 the returns will come back to the DAO. And this is where the magic happens. When you think about the stack of people who extract money out of an economic event, you'll have people at the top that are the managers or the ideation people. They're people who kind of come up with the idea. And then you have people down here who are the ones who uh, actually do the hard work of creating the happy box. But then you have people all throughout the chain that extract resources from the productivity of these people here and the people who have the identity up here. You'll notice there's a, there's a very, very similar structure between this and that. The question is, are these people needed? Historically, the answer has been absolutely. We need to have accountants. We need to have lawyers. We need to have salespeople. We need to have people that, that have a very special set of skills that they can take this product to market and create the value. What blockchain has given us the ability to do is when we make our happy box and all this coordination that happens inside a DAO, we can build a smart contract. And into that smart contract, we can take our votes on our responsibility about where we're gonna sell happy box. 
and we can put it into the smart contract. We can take our assets, our $10,000, and put that also into the smart contract. And then when our votes and our decisions are executed, that smart contract immediately sends out the information. It sells the happy box. It pays the workers. And so you don't need a finance department. You don't need a legal department. You don't need these other departments that the smart contract itself, which by the way, doesn't cost anything to work. You don't need all that stuff. And that means that this total profit chain, this total economic activity, the value is now spread amongst everybody in the DAO rather than being lost at the various different stages of a hierarchical organization. That's brilliant, that's great, Sam. Thank you so much, I love it. But sounds like you just got in a room with a couple of your buddies, smoked a couple joints, and decided that this was the way of the future. How can this actually work? Uh, the answer is, in a lot of times, maybe it can. Because if you don't have the right shared, enthusiastic interest, people are gonna try to extract value from this organization without putting any value in. But what this organization allows you to do with the power of the smart contracts is create a more efficient allocation of resources. And for the people who are involved in it, this guy gets to be paid for something that he's enthusiastic about doing. He really excited about the, the, the Happy Box product. He's super, super excited about it. He thinks about it all day. And he innovates on it all of the time. And that innovation from him and from all of his buddies that are also thinking about it all the time make this happy box better, faster, stronger than the happy box that the traditional organization sells. We know that this already works. Historically, in the economic sense, we look at co-ops and we've seen that the validity, the strength, the fiscal longevity of co-ops are actually twice as strong as traditionally structured organizations. A traditional startup, after five years, 80% of them have died, have gone bankrupt. A co-op, after five years, only 40% have died or gone bankrupt. That means that the 20% success rate for the original organizations is dwarfed by the 60% uh, success rate of a co-op. The DAOs take it one step further with the autonomous, with the smart contracts. They are then able to say, okay, we're gonna cut out all this stuff that we don't need at all and take that extra resources and attribute them to the various different members. And that's the game changer. That's the thing that's amazing. There are a couple of cautions though that we have to be careful of. Caution number one is the fact that, look, if I'm incredibly enthusiastic about something and I'm spending 60 hours a week on it, odds are that's gonna start feeling like a job. And I really don't want my thing that I love to become a job. So we need to make sure that these DAOs are not exclusive. If this guy here in this DAO also wants to participate in this other DAO over here, then he can. That's totally okay. And he'll spend 10 hours a week building the happy box. But then he'll spend 10 hours a week over here building the uh, happy diamond, which is just a happy box on its side. But that's fine, because he's enthusiastic and he doesn't get burnt out. And harnessing that enthusiasm is more powerful than following one man's leadership or one woman's leadership. That's the other thing that the DAOs can do better than the traditional organizations. If Mr. Happy CEO is wrong about his prediction, that wrong travels all through the entire organization. And then everybody's toast. If this guy right here is wrong about what he wants to do with Happy Box, that's fine. Because he has all the other people who are also innovating and also trying very, very hard to make sure Happy Box is the best possible product on the market. They're not required to follow one man's vision. They take votes. They have shared responsibility. Whenever I talk about DAOs, I also always love to talk about the mental model that we need to break when we're establishing a DAO. 
because the revolutionary concept here is the fact that I'm going to be able to start a DAO and then get paid for the stuff that I'm enthusiastic about. That doesn't make any sense. Because you're thinking about it in a way that says, what I'm doing is I'm starting a business. It's not. You're starting a group. You're starting a club. You're coming together with a community of people that are enthusiastic about the same thing you're enthusiastic about. And you can't do that by yourself. So you join with these other people. And instead of spending of your working hours when you walk in and punch your clock and you spend seven hours doing stuff you hate, but you have that one hour of your career in that day that you love it. When you join with that other community, that one hour can be your entire career. And that is really what will revolutionize work. It's a more efficient allocation of resources that'll allow you to be paid for the stuff that you're enthusiastic about. So I think hopefully I've answered some of your questions. Odds are I've probably left you with more questions at the end than you had at the beginning. That's okay. DAOs in general, this is, we're in a new world. We are trailblazing business organizations and, and functions and, and ways in which we coordinate across massive groups of people and massive distances and geography in a way that's, that's unheard of. No one's done it before. But we at Harmony are very excited about that future. So if you do have questions, don't hesitate. Drop them to the comments below, right down there. And when you do our community or I will get in there and we'll answer them. Also, if you want to learn more about what Harmony is doing and how we are pushing this entire thing forward in concert with our many different partners, visit us at talk.harmony.one. That's our forum. And you will see a bunch of different people talking about the various different DAOs. Because we need the tools. We need your help. We have to figure out, okay, where are the pain points when we talk about coordination amongst our group? Where are the pain points when we talk about paying these people out for the work that they're doing? What if I want to start a brand new one? How do I go about doing that? How do I go about recruiting more people to my DAO? How do I make sure that the, we are responsible about how we're using our, our, our pool of assets? All of those are important questions to ask. Some of the answers we have, some of the answers we're still looking for. And hopefully, I want to invite you to join us on this journey. Come and be one with us at Harmony and build what will be the future of work.